beim Start. It has never let me down during takeoff or flying. I feel good because it gives me security. I was surprised that I managed to fly 300 kilometers already. I think the biggest advances of RAS is in the EMB class. We talk more about a design feature which has a lot of potential but which needs explaining. Sure, there are still people who laugh at the system and call it a publicity stunt. Paragliders are not fixed-wing aircraft. Therefore, they collapse when the pressure and turbulence becomes too great. They unload. That's the way it is. It has to be like that, doesn't it? With swings rust, these collapses become less dramatic, so they say. But what is rust, and where does it come from? The origins of this valve were rooted in a completely different goal. There was a problem with Swing's new beginner glider in 2014. The prototype did not want to launch well. We didn't like the way it behaved. It was then that I remembered that this hadn't been the case with the Proto Nightmare as it had been named. A glider with a high aspect ratio we had worked on some time ago. As part of its construction, it contained a fabric wall and launched straight well. So I thought, let's put a wall in this glider and that improved the launching behavior straight away. That was the so-called bug fix. The idea was to put a material wall internally across the span of the wing and that way you'll fill the front area faster. And the glider comes up more quickly. The whole thing worked, interestingly enough, on the first try. What we only noticed later, during the testing of extreme maneuvers over the water, was that the glider showed completely different reactions than a normal glider. Simply put, while executing these extreme actions, the wing was much more benign. And we saw how you can influence and change not only the launch behavior, but the whole flight. But what exactly is this wall? this valve in its different variations. In the meantime, we had developed it into a structural component. In other words, it is fully connected to the ribs within the cell from the top to the bottom sail. This has the effect of forming a spar. It's a C, just like in an aeroplane. And ideally, as we have adapted it over time, it sits directly above the pilot. This knowledge is the result of a long journey. Günter Wöll, together with Michael Nessler and Alessio Casola, recognized early on that there were opportunities in the fabric web. It was also very apparent that it would take many more attempts, and thus a lot of time and money. They sewed, glued, and experimented. We've put almost three-fourths of a million into the whole project so far, plus prototypes and other things that have been built. Günther, it was worth it to him. He said he saw potential in it and more or less financed the patent. Günther Wöll even applied for public funding for innovations in small and medium-sized businesses. Besides a lot of paperwork, the patent on Rust was required for this and was the icing on the cake of the development. The patent is about the method that divides a paraglider into two sections or divides several sections and creates different pressure ranges. And with these different pressure areas within the paraglider, which acts similarly to a protective wall in a car fuel tank, for example, you can influence how fast the fluids move, or in our case, the air internally, from one part of the wing to the other. And with that, you can influence the reactions of the entire wing. The collapses weren't so big, and there was less loss of altitude if one did occur. In flight, the glider was more stable. Above all, there was more enjoyment when flying. The swing gliders were supposed to offer all this, and the manufacturer went about communicating this to the pilots. Most recently, in 2019, Swing published a booklet all about rust. The advantages could be read in black and white. But the flying community expected something else. The expectation was that a previously ENC-rated glider would get an ENB rating simply because it had rust. Unfortunately, it was not that simple. 
The messaging didn't seem to be getting through to the pilots. And then there was also the Aguera, a sea glider with rust, of which only a third of the pilots that purchased them seemed to be happy. The Aguera showed just how complex rust production was. All the gliders that gave rise to criticism were returned and are in storage. It was an expensive financial lesson for rust development. In the Aguera, we tensioned the rust system as well as the front and trailing edges. This gave it far too much tension. Once the glider had been sewn together, there was no way of checking this tensity. The tolerances were so fine that any slight variation in sewing made for different behavior. Ultimately, it was way over-engineered. However, designer Alessio Casola and Maurizio Bottegal from the development team did not want to give up. They convinced Gunther Wöhl to try again, to bring the first END with Rust to the market. However, one thing was clear to everyone. There would be no second chances this time. The developers got out their scissors. Uh, with the Rust, the Rust, the kind of it was too much stable. I remember we cut a lot of things. When we, when we were to the landing, the people watching us with the eyes like this, <laughs> yeah. because we're going to cut all the construction, all the high strap, all the diagonal ribs. We stay one afternoon with a cut, yeah, in, yeah. Into a <laughs> cut and cut and cut. In the end, we cut too much. Bit by bit, Alessio and Maurizio came closer to their goal. Then, at the beginning of 2022, the Svera came to the market. Swing's second attempt in the performance class, integrated with the knowledge gained from the Aguera experience. We know right now that it was a right improvement in everything, safety and also performance. So performance, we know, of course, not when you are in the normal air, but when you are flying in turbulence, strongest is the turbulence, as much more is working the rust. <laughs> Strong statements from the designer. And what do the pilots think? Matthias Verla from the Black Forest was one of the first recreational pilots to fly the Sfera. On the glider, I'm flying now the Sfera. The concept is now so mature that it is one of the best inventions for a two-liner. Simply to take away this small residual risk in case you have a collapse while in turbulent air, that you can still get control of it. Matthias Verla has been flying for 12 years. With the Sfera, the man from the Black Forest was able to complete some large triangles and flew cross-country distances of over 200 kilometers in 2022. He became the German flatland champion flying it. In just under 50 hours of flying with this Sfera, I only had some minor incidents. In example, there was a small side collapse, but it was totally unspectacular. The same goes for a frontal collapse that came in over half or a third of the glider's front. That was absolutely unspectacular. For me, this is an argument to say that I can fly a two-liner with peace of mind, even as a family man. Of course, there is always a residual risk, but for me, it is absolutely acceptable. The Alpine foothills and the Alps are home to Tim Huber, who also switched to the Sfera. The result? Yes, it was not so bad. My furthest flight from the Grente came as a surprise that I had really been able to fly 300 km after all. My personal best, something I had been trying to achieve for years. Tim Huber is a passionate cross-country pilot. For him, the Sfera is the perfect aircraft in this terrain. It's just that I'm extremely relaxed and don't have to concentrate so much on the flying itself. And I think that's one of the most important things. If you're not afraid of your glider, then you can simply concentrate more on the tactics and the next thermal and thus get more out of it. The D-rated Sfera is the racehorse in the stable. 
but the development team knew that D-Class gliders would continue to appeal to only a small group of pilots. That's why one year after the Sfera, the C-Class two-liner Libra is now the starting line. Alessio Casola has developed a glider that is easier to fly and, at 4 kilograms, lighter to carry. We're still learning how to use the rust, about the tension of the rust, about the position of the rust. And uh, we have seen that when we change and when we find the right position, the wing is working immediately better. Uh, in the Sfera, we use a C system, it's closet, that's its operating closet. On the Libra, we use a simple system. Because we have seen when we need that it's going to inflate it a little bit faster or slowly. And this is a mountain wing, so we need that the inflation is different from the Sfera. It must be a little bit easier and a little bit faster. C-rated two-liners are currently the topic among paragliders, at least when it comes to chatting over landing beers. Swing wants to get people talking with the Libra. Having the ability to build C-rated two-liners, I see the possibility that we will actually get a second chance to generate attention with rest and get the notice of the pilots that we didn't achieve before. It's all about perception, and that requires top performance and reliability. In the large ENB class, the reliability of rust gliders has long been known by active pilots. Dutchman Erwin Vogt regularly tests paragliders. The Serac light glider was a particular challenge for him. What I prefer to do with a collapse to make it a little bit natural by making a pitch pin, 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 pendulum very high, that's collapsed by itself. That's more really realistic than pulling on some lines. And I tried it with the Serax, and it was impossible. I, I did not manage to get it collapsed. He also tested the High B Neos 2 RS for an international paragliding magazine. Now, if you compare some high end, high end Bs, some are more difficult to fly, they're really performant on the edge. But for the general, I don't know, EMB pilot, and then I was, hey, this high end B, because the Neos are really well performing gliders, they fly more safely, more relaxing. Danielle von Butelaar flies a Serac, and it obviously offers her safe and relaxed flying, even when things get exciting. With it, I also dare to fly a little longer when I actually find the conditions exciting, and I quickly find it exciting. So that means I can do a slightly nicer, longer flight in conditions that are still just fine, but I feel safe. Sometimes, I think that for an experienced pilot, they might not be bothered if they have rust or not. But for me, it gives more security through a calmer mind. And yes, rust helps me a lot. Biljana Page feels better. Romy Prokshat also experiences this perceived safety with her Neos RS. She calls herself a pleasure flyer. At Tremont in the Vosges, East Launch Site, we started there in the evening at 17.30. I was a first starter. Started, climbed, climbed. And after a good half hour I went to land, was totally thrilled because it was a quiet flight. The other pilots didn't take off in places because the wind at the takeoff site was quite demanding. Yes, that was something like a shoulder strike for me. So, Ross gliders cannot be quite as bad or superfluous as some say. Nevertheless, dealers and flying schools need a lot of staying power. People are actually quite hard to convince. They really have to meet people who fly a Rast glider, who have the experience, are enthusiastic and say, hey, it really helped me out. However, the prejudice still persists that Swing's Rast gliders are difficult in SIV training. Designer Alessio Casola is also an SIV instructor. On the safety training, what is different is how to pull the risers to, to have the same collapses between normal wing and wing with rust. But it's not so difficult. 
because it's only the direction on how fast you're going to pull the, the risers. For the other safety training, for the, the normal the other teacher, they know that when you change the direction where you pull the riser, it's changing how it's coming the collapses. So I think it's not a big problem if the trainer is a good trainer. The Rust system has so far only been available in Lilo and Swing gliders, with one exception. In Zaland, Rico Priznitz has the license for the design element and builds it into his paraglider wings with full conviction. Whenever a body is moving through a medium, be it fluid or air, in mechanical engineering and in general, it helps to break the space into different chambers. That brings a level of safety and various positive effects. What is special about these paragliders, however, is that they are model wings. The designer's experience, however, sounds familiar. I don't have to worry so much about collapses when I'm flying. Especially when I'm thermaling and listening to the vario with turbulence. But I can concentrate on flying. It simply flies more control. Rust works, even for the little ones.